I will say this, and I don't mean to um, embarrass you, but Al loves you, man. Um, and um, uh, it's been just such a pleasure of mine since moving to Los Angeles to get to know Al Michaels. And and so when I told him I was doing the show, the NFL 100 all-time team show with you, he's just like, wait till you, wait till you get next to him. And you were dynamite on this show, Chris. You were amazing. And I, I knew you had the ability to... Uh, converse and talk uh, in a studio setting. But the thing that really hit me, and I, and I think there's a lot of folks who obviously have known you as a broadcaster for as long as you have, for as successfully as long as you have, you had an amazing uh, experience playing against a lot of these guys who were named to the all-time team, and Paul Brown as well. Do you have a good story you just want to leave a- everyone with about one of the people who have been uh, announced? I mean, Mel Blunt, somebody that you played against that that uh, left you uh, impressed or literally physically, if not uh, emotionally, an impression upon you, Chris? <laughs> they let, all left a lot of impressions on me, but probably uh, Jack Lambert after I caught a ball one time over the middle in my rookie year. And um, I came walking. I, I'm sitting there, and Jack sort of gave me the knee to the groin and the elbow to the chest and <laughs> – grabbed my face mask and gave me one of those Collinsworth if you ever come over to middle again I'll kill you <laughs> and um, I was like alright so I kind of staggered to my feet and walked back over the huddle and Anthony Munoz is over there and, and I got this big smile on my face and, and Anthony said the heck you smiling about man Jack Lambert almost killed you over there <laughs> I said, I know, but he knew my name, man. Jack Lambert knew my name. <laughs> oh, uh, I mean, it was a thrill for me. We got a chance to uh, to sit amongst greatness. Uh, you were your usual fantastic self. And you. It, you know what it felt, Rich? It just felt casual, didn't it? Yeah, it felt casual. It felt neat. It was really cool. It was a, a great feeling to it all. Um, I agree. It re- just everyone was left buzzing talking about how special uh, the shoot was and how obviously NFL films would have six months in an edit bay to make it work. We all knew how great it was. And again, that Lambert story that I think La- it wasn't Lambert, the one that Belichick started talking about how Lambert got his first shot at, uh, in college because the guy in front of him on the depth chart left to be a, a security for the Rolling Stones. I mean, was <laughs> right. I mean, like again, Belichick. We're like, what are you talking? Like, is he giving us Rolling Stones football trivia? That was amazing. Was- you know, the, the thing that I came away with was, man, wouldn't you like to be one of the Jimmy Johnsons of the world that got to go on his boat after the season when he was really just had a beer in his hand and, and totally out of gear and just sitting and BSing around and telling football stories with, and it would be great. But the other thing that I came around uh, away from. Uh, that whole thing was, God, I'm really old, man. I, no. I mean, I, I literally either grew up watching as a kid, playing against, mm-hmm. broadcasting almost everybody on that board. That's I mean, right. there was, there, you know, other than the ones that Belichick brought back in black and white, That's right. That's I mean, right. I really had a firsthand yep. recollection yep. of almost everybody on that team. And I was like, <laughs> Yeah, you know what? But I, I took it as just you being uh, a perfect analyst to uh, sit next to Belichick and for me uh, to enjoy sitting next to you for that. It was awesome. For more of the Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.